The 3 to 1 method for cooking ribs has long been a contentious topic, with some arguing it ruins ribs and others claiming it's their go-to technique. So, what's the truth behind this debated method? In this video I'll share my personal experience and demonstrate how to properly use this method while adapting it to cook delicious ribs. <laughs> With my grill ready and coal basket in place, I'll start by adding cherry wood for flavor. I'll smoke ribs at 225 degrees for the first 4 hours to infuse a rich complex smoke flavor. Cooking at higher temperature like 250 degrees wouldn't provide enough time for this depth of flavor. Temperature control can be tricky on a Weber kettle. I recommend checking it periodically and adjusting when as necessary. It's also beneficial to use an additional thermometer, as the built-in one may give inaccurate readings due to its location directly above the heat. Normally I smoke only two ribs in the kettle to avoid overheating near the charcoal basket. However, today I will use three ribs to demonstrate temperature distribution and the importance of keeping ribs away from the heat source. I have two racks of baby back ribs and one rack of St. Louis style ribs. From what I understand, professional pit masters often avoid wrapping ribs, instead monitoring color and temperature to achieve perfect tenderness, flavor and texture via smoking, collagen breakdown and protein coagulation. And the popular 3 to 1 methods The popular 3 to 1 method follows the strategy. Initially, ribs are smoked at low heat around 225F for 3 hours, infusing smoking flavor and initiating collagen breakdown. Then, contrary to traditional pit master methods, the ribs are foil wrapped for 2 hours to maintain moisture and further tenderize the meat. Lastly, in the final unwrapped hour, protein coagulation and caramelization from apolite glaze or sauce occur. In addition to ribs, I will be preparing smoked pork lard to enhance the flavor during the wrapping phase. For this, you will need a small bowl-shaped foil. Place two generous tablespoons of lard per rib rack into the foil bowl. Set this in the smoker with the ribs, allowing the pork lard to absorb the smoky aroma. Leave it undisturbed until the ribs are ready for pull back stage. Five minutes before wrapping stage, put lard back onto the grill so it can melt. Three hours into the cooking process and it's time for spraying. I'm using a homemade 50-50 mix of apple cider vinegar and water. The vinegar not only adds a great flavor, but its low pH helps soften any crusty exterior. So when the ribs have a nice dark mahogany color and when the exterior begins to dry slightly, it's time to spray. After 3 hours of cooking at 225 degrees, I start spraying for final hour every 15-20 minutes. Just before hitting the 4 hour mark, prepare some extra charcoal to swiftly elevate the temperature to 275 degrees. If not, the temperature increase will be slow even with all vents open. At 4 hour, we boost the temperature primarily for two reasons. Firstly, to encourage meat pullback from the bone. Secondly, a higher temperature promotes superior fat rendering. So, we are still infusing smoke flavor, but our primary focus so we are still infusing smoke flavor, but our primary focus shifts towards achieving potential pullback on the bones and efficient fat rendering. Ok, it seems like everything is ok and the ribs should be fine, so what's the problem? Why are there so many opponents of this method? One more time, the 3 to 1 method for ribs involves smoking them for 3 hours wrapping them for two hours and then glazing them for one last hour. Think about it. It only references time and ignores all other variables like temperature, weight, marbling, size or even the type of rib. Using it as a step-by-step -step instruction can result in overcooked ribs aka fall of the bone, which some people prefer, but my goal is to achieve a smoky flavor rich mahogany color and tender meat that separates easily from the bone. This indicates that all connective tissues have been rendered, eliminating the need to pull the silver skin from your teeth later. Does this mean the 3 to one method doesn't work? Of course not. It can still work, but you should adjust it to your taste, just like with any recipe. 
Don't follow online recipes too closely, as you are the one eating it. Use the 3 to 1 method as a ratio guide, but don't feel restricted to the classic low and slow tempo of 225 to 50 F for 6 hours. Some people use a modified 2 1 half method, while others stick to the direct 3 to 1 method and enjoy fall of the bone ribs. Once you achieve a rich mahogany color, wrap the ribs and cook until tender, ideally between 197-205F, then perform a toothpick test to ensure no resistance and let them rest before eating. Almost forgot, you can either remove the membrane to allow the smoke to penetrate more effectively, or you can choose to score the membrane instead, which has a similar result. I will do both. Keep seasoning simple for pork, use just salt and pepper to enhance its natural taste and avoid overusing rub as it stops the smoke from penetrating evenly. Alright, 5 hours have passed and it's time for the wrapping phase. Place ribs on the foil with the meat facing down and add smoked pork fat. Wrap it up and send it back to the grill for 30 minutes at the same 275 degrees. You might be wondering who I am to give advice. But I'm not a professional pit boss, nor have I participated in any championships. I simply love smoked meat. Click the like button if you also believe that there is nothing more delicious than smoked meat. I've been using a Weber kettle grill for 5 years, experimenting and learning to cook various dishes. In those 5 years I've cooked ribs about 40 times, and my first 50-20 attempts were unsuccessful due to using too many spices, or not enough smoky flavor, or the meat not being tender enough. And I realized I shouldn't follow online recipes too strictly, but rather adapt them to my preference. While we are in the wrapping phase, let's prepare. While we are in the wrapping phase, while we are in the wrapping phase, let's prepare some glaze. I like to add some sort of berry jam for glazing, as it adds some color. For example, honey berries work well, by the way, grown in my garden. To make the glaze, you will need half a cup honey berry jam, two tablespoons apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons ketchup, one tablespoon brown sugar, half tablespoon Dijon mustard, one teaspoon Worcestershire sauce, half teaspoon garlic powder, half teaspoon onion powder, salt and pepper to taste. Combine all the ingredients in a saucepan and bring to a simmer. Cook for 10-15 minutes, stirring occasionally, until the sauce has thickened and the flavors have melded together. Adjust the seasoning and sweetness according to your taste preferences. The wrapping phase is coming to an end and we need to ensure the ribs are ready. Unwrap the foil and insert a thermometer. We want the temperature to be around 200-207 degrees. If everything checks out, the ribs are ready to eat. However, I still want to apply the glaze. Apply the glaze to the ribs and return them to the grill for an additional 15-30 minutes. While we are waiting for the ribs, let's make a side dish. I absolutely love eating ribs with classic coleslaw. In a bowl mix together 4-5 tablespoons mayonnaise, 1 tablespoon honey, 1 tablespoon apple cider vinegar, half teaspoon salt and quarter teaspoon black pepper. Add quarter head shredded cabbage and 1 small grated carrot. Toss until coated. Chill in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before serving. Once the glaze becomes sticky, remove the ribs from the heat and let it rest for 10 minutes. To sum up, the first 4 hours are for smoke flavor development, the fifth for protein coagulation and meat pulling back from the bone, followed by wrapping and finally glazing. This method works well even for smaller ribs, preventing them from becoming mushy. The first thing I want to check is if they fall apart or not. As you can see, they bend, but don't break or fall apart. If the meat is slightly tearing and cracking, it's the sign that they are done. The bones don't come out easily, which means they are not full of the bone. But this one is definitely full of the bone. You can see this is, this is breaking apart and they're definitely overcooked. Um, too much direct heat. Now I want to see what we've got inside. Oh, smoky! I'm ready to, to take a bite. See? The clean bite. This is exactly what I wanted. I don't know anything on the planet which tastes better. Really, I can eat them 
let me know in the comments if you have tried this recipe and were able to achieve similar or even better results. We also have a coleslaw here. For me, this is a perfect combination with smoky ribs. The only problem with these smoked ribs is that it takes six hours to cook them. But if you don't have time and want some delicious barbecue anyway, check out this video where I make beautiful tri-tips with smoky flavor and crispy crust using reverse sear method. Peace.